David Forster is a refrigeration engineer on 24-hour call in the family business he runs with his wife, Jenny. They live with their two teenage sons in a semi on one of Lowestoft's busiest roads. But David is also a fantastically ingenious inventor. His homemade car is one of many imaginative creations. Now, at the age of 47, he's about to embark on his biggest challenge yet, an 85-foot water tower lost in the woods of Norfolk. He's going to convert this huge industrial building into a fairy tale family home, and he's going to project manage it himself, despite continuing to work 16-hour days. But is this a dream too far? Every now and then, a very special project comes along, and this is one of them. The tower is a hidden gem. The setting is magnificent, and the atmosphere magical. This disused Victorian water tower cost £85,000, but it was never intended to be lived in. It has no plumbing, electrics, or even a staircase. Yet David sees it as a dream family home and a perfect escape. Appeal is the quietness of it, the fact that you've got wildlife. It's amazing to see these deer with the antlers, mm -hmm. and they just stand there looking at you, and then they just move on through the through the wood. It's quite extraordinary, quite extraordinary. This is going to be heaven, isn't it? Waking up here in the morning. I know. And I have to say, I, I'm not saying it's everybody's um, dream, but it certainly is mine to get away from the rat race. And there it is. Look at that. Yeah. That is fantastic, it, it isn't is it? It is amazing. And I sometimes, when I come up here and I have a very stressful day, I can sit at the base of that tower there, and it's just wonderful. You can just hear the bees and the birds and the squirrels come up. I mean, where would you get that, eh? Where would you get that? It is fantastic. It's such an idyllic it's setting, different. it's beautiful. I can actually visualise my wife up the top there on the balcony <laughs> calling to me. Is she going to be like Rapunzel? <clears throat> Possibly, yeah. Down to yeah, I know. Right, here we go. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, we can get the door open. There we are. Here we go. It's this lovely smell. Um, I don't know if you can smell it at all. It's uh, <sighs> the smell of the old paraffin engine that used to pump the water up through the, this through is the top there. fantastic, isn't it? It is Absolutely amazing. Absolutely beautiful. The tower is 85 feet tall. You can only get up it by climbing a ladder, and the windows are just tiny slits. It was built over 100 years ago to provide running water for a grand house nearby. At the top is a magnificent room with 360-degree views across the Norfolk countryside. It has beautiful windows so that the estate gamekeepers could keep a lookout for porches. David bought the tower with an £85,000 loan from his mother. He hopes to do the conversion for £30,000, which he's taken from savings and from the family business. David has very ambitious plans for so little money. The roof will be stripped, insulated and retiled, new Velux windows added and solar power rods fitted to provide green energy. Underneath the roof, in the light and airy top room, the stunning beamed ceiling and breathtaking panoramic views will be preserved. This will be the sitting room. Further down the tower, the two existing floors will be converted into bedrooms with bathrooms. David will add two new floors to create a third bedroom and a kitchen. On every floor, he will have to punch in new windows to let in more light. The whole building will be joined by a handmade spiral staircase measuring 60 feet. At its base, David wants a glass table above the 40 foot deep well shaft to make a stunning feature in the entrance hall. It's beautifully built. We've, we've got to clear it all out. There's a hundred years worth of rubbish down there. We're going to light the well up, right. um, put the lights actually into the water. OK, so you get this beautiful effect down below. I've got it all up here. I've got it sussed Fantastic. up here. Fantastic. 
Okay. I'm so desperate to get to the top to see right. this view. Just keep clicking on those uh, harnesses on. All right, let me just hook on. Are you all right? You've got your harness and everything, yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. I mean, we're above the trees. Look I at know. That. That's incredible. You've got Absolutely. blue skies and the trees. Beautiful. Look, I mean, um, this is where the squirrels, they all come up and jump, you know, between each of these branches. I mean, it is unique. You can touch the trees, you can get a pine cone there if you pull oh. one off. Now, if you rub it, can you smell the pine from that, look? It's, it's mean, all losing. You really feel like you're sort of back to oh, nature no. here, don't you? It's a big project. There's it is a, a big project, yes. I realise that. But it's no, no worse than building a, a big house, you know? The, the structure is already here. It's just a matter of putting the floors in putting decent windows in and the plumbing and the electrics and you're there, the structure's there, isn't Apart it? Apart from all that, there's not much to do at no, all, is there? No, nothing, <laughs> nothing at all, really. Now, are you confident you can do this? Well, that's interesting. There's been one or two members of the family who said, oh, blow that, force us folly, you'll never do it, who, who absolutely incense me. All the believers, all right, can come straight in here when it's finished. We can have a nice glass of chilled wine, all right, and a little chat, OK? All the non-believers can go over to the middle of that field there with a tomato <laughs> juice and they can sit there in the mud. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Renovating the tower is a tall order, but if David can make it work, it's going to be magnificent. Fifteen months ago, David Forster bought a fairy tale disused water tower hidden in a wood. He wants to convert it into a family home and escape from his busy working life. David's an engineer and runs a refrigeration business with his wife Jenny. He sees the tower as their magical new family home, but Jenny knows this is very much her inventor husband's project. I only saw it twice before he said I'm going to buy it. The first time I saw it, it was far more of a wreck than I'd ever been led <laughs> to believe. And I could see it didn't matter what I said or, you know, whether I didn't approve, he was still going to go for it. But do you think if David's working that hard, he deserves this escape? Yes. Yeah, I think he does. I think he does. And, I mean, David goes for things and, you know, he does achieve where other people don't because he gives his 100%. Work begins in October. David and Jenny have agreed that he can initially spend £30,000 on the project. It's a tiny budget. It means David will have to do a lot of the work on the tower himself. But for some of the big structural jobs, he's had to employ a local builder. He needs to have the tower waterproof before major work can begin inside. And so they're starting with the roof. This is an awkward and dangerous job. They'll have to haul supplies 85 feet up the outside of the tower on pulleys and clamber up ladders. Huge jobs ahead, all the wiring and plumbing for starters. But instead, he decides to begin by removing the old weather vane so it can be restored. I don't know. He balances 85 feet up with no safety harness. Oh. This is a bad idea and oh, is God. very dangerous. That's a bloody bullet hole. Luckily, David and his weather van survive. We look like Lauren Hardy, don't we? Builders get on with their first job, stripping off the old roof tiles so they can insulate the roof, retile it, and put on a solar heating system. <laughs> David gets on with restoring his weather vane. It bears the initials of the wealthy American stockbroker, George Corston, who had the water tower built for his property over a hundred years ago. Oh, look at that, that's lovely. Hundred years worth of grime coming off there. That's been on top of that water tower all those years. It's seen two world wars. It's seen rain, sleet, hail, bright sunshine. I feel quite honored to be polishing it, really. I'd love to meet the guy who made this. Over a quarter of David's budget is being spent on the roof. 
the builders aim to insulate it and get the tiles back on before the winter closes in. But working so high up means they're exposed to strong winds and progress is slow. You can't work comfortably up there today because you're slip sliding about and that's not very good. That's a fairly good fall down there. Mm. But the fall will never hurt you. That's a sudden stop that do all the damage. <laughs> Meanwhile, David has turned his attention from the very top of the tower to the very bottom, clearing out the 40-foot deep freshwater well. We'll get this pipe out of the way first. His son Stephen has been roped in to help. David has brought out of retirement an oxygen tank he last used in the 1970s. Come on. Well, hold that, bloody So I can get the bloody thing off. I'm upside That's down. upside down, isn't it? That's so long since I've used it. I can see David is not one to take an orthodox that's, approach. That's it, yeah, because I've got my gauge here. Are you really going to inhale 30 year old oxygen? Yes. See, oh, God, put my glasses off. Sure, it is even oxygen. Well, I've got to have it on. I can't breathe that stuff down there. It's bloody awful. I've still got to get my goggles over the top of it and light the torch up and cut the bloody pipe through. And get down the well. Well, yeah. By the end of November, worsening weather conditions mean that the builders can no longer work on the roof. They go off to other jobs, leaving the tower to David. He's responsible for plumbing the building from scratch and completely rewiring it. He's also taken on all the interior work, from the handmade kitchen to the painting and decorating. On top of that, he's commissioned a 60-foot spiral staircase, one of the most complicated design features of the entire build. It's a massive project, but two months in, with the huge list of jobs yet to start, there's still only one thing on his mind, clearing out his well. So you've got no one else helping you out? No, George, I haven't. I'm going to grab you and I'm going to get you absolutely filthy, <laughs> all right? Because it's gr grub and grime down there. It's, it's horrible, so... Um... That sounds ominous. Oh, you can feel the heat. He asks me to help him clear out the rubbish down there, but it takes us two hours just to cut one old valve free from the other pipework. You all right? Watch that tank, it's just going to hit on the yeah, back there. Just, just take that bit, George, will you? Right, that's the one you want to pull down. This one. OK. Yeah. And that, very slowly, keep pulling it, slowly now. We rig up a pulley system to get the valve out. She's a free, now she's like a pendulum. Can you see her hanging yeah. there? It weighs 250 kilos and takes another hour to lift. Without being rude, George, if I reach through your legs... And see <laughs> <what> you... <laughs> oh, 250 kilos of... Let me just see if I can get this up. Hot iron between my legs. <laughs> OK, now. OK, now, down you go, gently, now. What's your credentials? <laughs> it's hard to imagine him doing all this by himself. I'm happy to help out, but personally, I'd leave it down there. It's a piece of history and less work. <laughs> God, wonderful. I love this building, it's so romantic, and I love the well inside. I mean, it's so rare to have a, a big well inside a building, isn't it? I mean, you do get them, but only little ones, but, I mean, that's a magnificent beast in there. I mean, it's a centrepiece, isn't it? You come into a room, and, and you naturally, when you're walking, you normally walk, look where you're walking, and you'll just see this big glass sheet, and you'll stand over the top of it, and I'll have a table there or something, and I can have my scrambled eggs and bacon over the well. <laughs> Seriously, I mean... This is a big job. You're taking on a lot. You're trying to run a business. I know. I, I could do with somebody to give me a hand. I'd love it um, in many ways. But at the end of the day, I've got to just have to do it. I'll have to do it on my own. Despite having a whole tower to convert, David dedicates every spare hour, any spare pair of hands, to clearing out the well <laughs> for another three weeks and does nothing else on the tower at all. We needed the thigh boots on, definitely. 
I didn't fancy getting my uh, socks filled up. Well, there we are. No bodies, luckily. <laughs> I'm curious to find out just what makes David tick. Oh, right. And I'm well, hoping his wife Jenny can help. The They've yes. been married for 20 years yeah, and running their business together for eight. Thanks for calling. Bye. As the engineer, David is out and about installing and maintaining refrigeration systems. Jenny runs the office and finances. She's lived through a few of David's building projects before. A few years ago, he converted the loft in their house himself. So this is Stephen's bedroom, yes. which is one of David's infamous DIY projects, isn't it? One of his many, yes. We had discussed the fact that he was going to do a loft conversion. And, you know, some of David's ideas come to fruition and some don't. And I, I had no idea he was actually going to start it that day. I mean, I literally came home and there was a hole in the ceiling and there were bricks going all down the stairs. There was um, the dust over everything because he hadn't covered anything up. You know, it was just horrendous. <laughs> it really was. I don't know why I'm laughing about it. I wasn't laughing about it at the time, I can tell you. I absolutely <laughs> hit the roof. At that point, I nearly packed my bags and went back to my mother, I think, realising I'd made some almighty great blunder. When David started work on their new dining room, there was worse to come. The biggest fright he ever gave me is when they were doing the extension downstairs, he suddenly decided he wanted a, se a cellar, OK? And he literally just dug a hole in the ground <laughs> the, same, the same weekend. It really poured and poured with rain, and the hole in the ground filled up with water, you see. Now, my father, who's a bricklayer and was helping him build the extension, was really seriously worried about this. He thought the whole house was going to be sliding into this hole. So the rest of us daren't sort of go anywhere near it and lived in the front of the house in case we all slid in there. David may be impulsive, but he's an able and very talented engineer. He completely designed and built his car. And although it took them four years, it's totally unique. He was also involved in the conversion of this tiny, unusual cinema in Southwold. It was designed by his friend John Bennett, a professional architect, who also helped him draw up his plans for the tower. The, the seats are right up there. David's contribution to the design was this hidden underground tunnel that he dug to run the entire length of the cinema. The organist can sneak along and climb onto a hydraulic lift, which allows him to miraculously appear on stage to surprise the audience. Fantastic. It's like being in the Rocky Horror Show. I mean, it put the building work back about six months because they had to dig this thing out. It was well worth it, though, wasn't it? And I'm very glad we did, because it, it, we couldn't have done it. People would have twigged what was going on. So is this typical of David to come up with an idea that takes six months longer than it's supposed to? Yeah, I think you, that's mm. probably about... There are some, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a bit naughty, because I do spring these things on John. I mean, I do have a slightly eccentric imagination, and I think John does as well, and I think that's probably why we, it, it, it's, it's succeeding. Yeah, we're very bad for each other, dear. David can obviously produce results, but the water tower is by far the biggest project he has ever undertaken. And it's his biggest dream, to create a new life for himself and his family out here in the midst of the country. Christmas is approaching, and although the woods may be magical in the snow, the tower has had to be completely abandoned. There's been no progress on the build. Come the new year, David will have a huge list of jobs to tackle. But I'm wondering if he even has a schedule. And have you got a plan of work? So this happens one oh, week. Oh, yeah. This I've, got a start. I've got a little list at home, which I know exactly the order they've got to be done. And I've said before, it's got to start from the top and work downwards. 
because that's the logical way of doing it. So why have you been working on the well for the last well, I'm, months? Well, that's the build. The builders are working from the top downwards. I'm working from the well and working upwards. <laughs> All right. And we How long is it going to take you to meet in the middle? Well, About I 20 years. I'm going to, yeah, no, I don't think it'll be take long as that. That'll be fine. George, you've got to be positive. <laughs> you must be negative. You'll be, uh, you'll be, uh, you know, it's going to be fine. It'll be excellent. It'll be done. You'll see. When it's all done, all the non-believers can sit in the field over there okay. and have an orange juice. All the believers can come down and have a nice little glass of wine. You know, I want to stay here and no, have no. a nice glass of wine. Where we're standing I'm just getting here. a bit worried, so I'm being drawn to the field of non-believers over there. He's more confident than I am. I think a proper schedule of works is essential if this build is to get finished. But what I love about David is he's still finding eccentric ways to spend his precious time, like making a time capsule. My name is David Ronnie Forster, and I have restored the copper George Corston weather vane. When this is read, I shall be long gone, having been born on the 20th of February 1957 in Lowestoft, Suffolk, educated at Corston College in 1969 to 75. My best wishes to you all Kind regards, David G. Forster. This is going to go into this copper piece here. This is actually a Yorkshire fitting from a central heating system which I've adapted. And that's going to go on top of the on top of the weather vane. Two months ago he took down this weather vane. Now just before Christmas, with his son Freddie, he's putting it back up. Stick Keep your foot on it so it can't slide back. Yes, all right. <laughs> Let's right. go up the ladder. All right, all right. This is the only job that David has completed so far. David's optimism is endearing, but he's putting a finishing touch on a conversion that's barely started. That's like being on top of the world. Champagne bottle. Shh. Brilliant. That's me, boy. <laughs> the sun's come out just as I put in. It's almost symbolic. I'm really pleased it's up. And now moving down, we've got our solar panels going on next. All the tiles are going to be done. Go through. It'll be great. God bless you. He'd better get cracking in January, or his beautiful dream of living in a tower in the woods isn't going to happen for a long, long time. David Forster works 16-hour days, running a refrigeration business with his wife, Jenny. He's on call 24 hours a day. David's got a dream of a retreat in a fairy tale home, hidden in an enchanted wood by a lake. The dream is a Victorian water tower that needs a massive amount of work to turn it into a home. But David's got a budget of only £30,000 to transform it. He's taken on over half the work himself to make his tiny budget stretch and paying builders to do the rest. But the first three months of the project saw very little progress. David can only come to the tower after work and on weekends, and he's been ignoring crucial jobs in favor of clearing the well, which he's fascinated by. Now it's January and the weather is appalling. Work on the roof is out of the question, but the builders have returned to site and there is masses for them to do inside. All the new floors have yet to be laid, and the rooms partitioned before they can get anywhere near plastering or decorating. Ladders are their only means of getting around, so it's a slow, difficult job. David still has a huge to-do list himself, including all the electrics and plumbing, but he's down the well again. He does spend a lot of time where he shouldn't be and doing things that are not very helpful. He tends to be mostly down that well. That's another big chunk to take out. We're going to cut a piece of wood over top of that well so he can't get down anymore. Put a lock on it. <laughs> but nothing can stop David. He's so passionate. He never stops talking about it, OK? And we never sort of shut up, Dad, you know? We know. 
I think he's sort of missed out the middle part of how he's going to get there. He's, I can imagine he's got the picture in his head of what it's going to look like at the end, but I don't think he quite grasps what a mammoth task it's going to be to get there. I think that's what it is. It's crucial they get the spiral staircase in place. As well as providing essential access for the builders, it will boost motivation and at last turn the tower from industrial workspace to family home. The staircase is to be handmade and will cost over a third of the total budget. It's a huge technical challenge to make it spiral up 60 feet and work for six different floor levels. And the complications don't stop there. The stunning top room originally housed the water tank and the floor had to support its enormous weight. For the staircase to break through it will mean cutting a hole through the reinforced concrete and cast iron. This is a job for specialists, yet David thinks he can cut this hole himself. in here, David, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it certainly does, George. <sighs> it certainly does. What on earth is this? This is a tent scale model of the actual staircase that's going from the ground floor right the way up to the tank room here. This is brilliant. It looks like so, I thought it was uh, one of your inventions. So the big question, David, is when's the staircase going to be in? He's supposed to be building the first section yeah. um, in about three weeks' time. Three weeks. Not the whole thing, because it's going to take him quite some time to do it. And each one has to be built from the bottom upwards. Well, so, three weeks is fine. That's yeah, perfect. Make it bigger once you've chopped it. So the Martin has made a lot bigger. So at averages. the minute, you've got no idea when the no, entire stack is. We know this is a tent scale model, but until we actually get the real thing. Yeah, this is easy to build compared to oh, the real yeah, one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So we have to take it in pieces. The next one, after this first floor one, will okay. come in pieces. And we have to take it up through the hatchways and then assemble the next one. That slots in top of it. So it's like a, a, a basically it's like a, a building blocks right the way top. But this, like this could take months, couldn't it? Um, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. My biggest headache is cutting through this concrete steel floor here. Right, you've got concrete here. Well, you've I've, got, there's, there's you've got steel beams underneath. The steel you? beams I've got to take out. Each one of those must weigh at least three quarters of a ton. Okay, I've got marks of settling. I'll scribe out a big circle here and then I'll blast it through with a fire blanket underneath to catch any molten metal. And then we'll, uh, we'll have to lower it down. It could take months, David. It could do. Positive, George. <laughs> we've, got to keep, we've got to keep going. You know, there's lots of things we all want done quickly, but I think this should be like a fine wine. You should gradually uncork it. Hmm. Uh, look, I've got my teeth into it now. It's like a bulldog's got a teeth into a lump of meat. I'm not going to release it. His dedication and drive really are phenomenal. And as if he hasn't got enough work, David has come up with yet another job to add to the list. Inserting two skylights in the roof and a viewing platform below. It's a good idea. That's a... There's going to be two tiny little beds up there for, for, for adults. Beds? To, yeah, I'm going to have a tiny little floor, tiny little floor put in there. You're going to put a floor up there? There'll be a tiny floor in there. And the idea is you can have the windows open on, on, on a summer's evening yeah. and the stars are out and you can actually lie on your bed. You can look up when you're asleep at the stars. But so hang on, look, right, this floor that you're going to put in. Yeah, yeah. If it takes up too much of that area up there, I think it's going to ruin the roof. No. Because the roof looks fantastic now. It looks it beautiful. It does. No, I have thought about that, and I'm going to come up with a, an, an idea. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to... I'm come not... On. What you're is absolutely it? right. What is it? Well, um, I may actually... Uh, it's a possibility that I might actually put some form of glass inset in there, some thick glass inset. I mean, it sounds lovely. It sounds mm, fantastic. Well. And in bed, seeing the stars. But rather than doing that and spoiling the space, you could just have a little perimeter deck around the edge of that beam, climb up the ladder, and it's like a viewing point. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, um, it becomes another floor, which is yeah, another room, yeah, which then yeah. you start filling it with beds and furniture. Yeah, yeah. I think you have got a very valid point, and then perhaps you're swaying me now. It's February, and the weather has finally taken a turn for the better. <laughs> At long last, the builders can finish the roof. They're fitting high-tech solar tubes, the latest ecological method of providing hot water. David is very keen to make this tower environmentally friendly, but they are very expensive. All in, the roof has cost a quarter of David's £30,000 budget. In the top room, the skylights are going in, so David can do his stargazing. 
The builders are speeding up, but it means the pressure is on for David to put in his hours at the tower to keep the build on track. Good afternoon, Full Star Company, hello. Yes. But he's busier than ever at work. He and his son Stephen are having to give up their Sunday to deal with an emergency call out. I want to see how difficult it's become to manage both job and tower. Just how busy are things in the business at the moment? It is manic. But do you think the tower's being compromised because of the business? I think it has to a certain yeah, it extent. Has yeah. to a little bit, it? it really yeah. has, yeah. I mean, um, it's, it's difficult trying to get there. I mean, we're 45, 50 miles away from it at the moment. I mean, it's a Saturday morning. I'd rather be up there. I could be putting the wiring in, but I can't because I have to come in here. This is a contractual job and the water tower has to come at second best. But the water tower is a one-off entity. Once that's done, it's done. Mm -hmm. But my customers, I still have to look after them. But if you keep right. doing all this work, when are you going to get the tower finished? It's going well, to take forever. No. I have to just, I just have to keep going, George. If I have to work it until two or three o'clock in the morning, I've calculated that I can get away with about four and a half hours sleep. But I do need to have four and a half hours sleep. If I have less, if I have less than that, then I start sort of hallucinating a bit. I can't concentrate. <laughs> You're actually doing calculations now just to I work know, out the that. minimum amount and of sleep, sleep that you require. I can get away. Four and a half hours sleep, I can do it. Yeah, you'll need a... I'm not yeah. sure how realistic David is being about his abilities to cope. Even his wife Jenny is having doubts about the project. I still think it's going to take far longer than he envisages. And I think it's going to cost far more than he's said. So those are, those, I mean, are the two things that I always thought were going to be a problem. Cost and, uh, you know, I do feel it's a bit of an open checkbook, you know, be writing out money forevermore. How are you going to keep the momentum going on the build? Well, a lot of that is down to the wife. Because Jenny is in the background and obviously she's not getting too involved with it. But there is this slight pressure from her side of things. And what do you mean? What pressure? Well, I think she's, I mean, she obviously does want to, um, she does want to get the thing finished, the project finished. But she's not involved, is she? No, she's not. But she is in the background and she's still doing the finances. But what's yeah. happening at the minute is you're working on the business, I know. dipping in a little bit on the tower. And I'm just worried that the water tower is becoming a hobby. No. Rather than no, a real project. It's, no, it's not a hobby. It's, it's a hobby is something that you do forever and ever and ever, like fishing mm. or like, I don't know, playing um, badminton or something like that. This isn't a hobby, this is going to be finished. Um, yeah. David's always been determined, and finally that's materialised into a flurry of activity on site. Halfway up the tower, builders are breaking through the brickwork to make holes for the new windows. The six new floors are going in, and they're cutting through the joists to create a space for the spiral staircase. Okay which is due to arrive on site soon. Yo. Even the beloved well is finished. David's already worked 60 hours this week, but on Sunday morning, he's back at the tower with right. son Stephen, ready to put in a good 10 hours on rewiring the electrics. He can't afford to pay anyone else, so he's taken on the whole job himself. But you've cut, all right? Well, I don't want to cut it, do I? It's just a I ring, mate. Yeah. Now I'm going to pass it to you. Got it? Oh, bring it back to me. Got it. Starving. He's trying to draw me towards it, you know, come on, get into it, and, you know, I'm not. I'm just not feeling it at all, really. It's the peace and quiet that really does it for him. It's not just the building itself, it's the fact that, you know, there's no cars around there, no civilization, nothing. And he loves it. He absolutely loves it. That's what it is for him. By March, more progress. The first section of the spiral staircase is delivered. At £12,000 for making and fitting, the stairs are costing a third of David's entire budget. He can't have much money left. The stairs must be carefully slotted together. No one involved has ever made anything like this before. The staircase will be 60 feet tall, and they're anxious to find out if it's going to fit. Oh, that's alright. Three weeks later, progress is slow. 
each piece of the stairs is slowly slotted in, in a carefully worked out order. David starts to worry about where to position and cut the new access hall in the top floor of the tower. Is that it? Not wanting to shy away from a challenge, he comes up with an inventive way for making sure his measurements are correct. A plumb line and string. In his excitement at drilling the hole, he seems oblivious to the fact that he's perched over a 60-foot drop with no safety harness. Yet again. Oh, that's it. Can you, can you see it? Brilliant, we've got it. Well, there we have, that is where the staircase is going to come up through. He may know where the stairs are going, yeah, 800. But that tiny hole has still got to be made 1.6 metres wider. As always, completion feels a long way off, but progress has been made. At least there are floors down and some of the partition walls are in. But ongoing labour and material costs do add up, and by April, even the eternal optimist is starting to worry. There's still a lot to do, David, isn't there? There is a lot to do, yeah, I know that. I mean, I've got all the plumbing to do yet. All that's got to be done. I've got people Have coming... Have you not done the first fixed plumbing yet? No, not yet. I can't do that until I've got all the dry lining done. I've still got to drop in the uh, sewer pipe down there. That's got to be done yet. But I can't do that until the dry lining's done. David, it sounds like a bit of a nightmare. No, it is. It sounds like a coordination nightmare. It is. It's a proverbial pain in the butt. I am absolutely bloody petrified on this guy. I just hope it's going all right. I mean, the money's coming out of the bank account. I've never spent so much money before, and it's frightening. How's the budget? Um, How is the budget? Well, the budget is taking a severe battering at the moment. Um, we're, all right, we're keeping our heads above the water. I'm not actually in the red yet, but I'm not far off. Really? Oh, yeah. But hang on, you're only I know. through the bill. I know, I know, George. I know. It's just doing my head in. It's lunacy. Lunacy. But there's two ways of doing it, George. You can either borrow large sums of money and get it done quickly and move in, or you take your time and you do it um, on a low budget where you do most of it yourself and you prolong the agony. Yes, and it is agony, isn't it? It is. It is agony at the moment, trying to get things right, trying to make sure everything is, is there at the right time. Can you actually afford to do this? I can if I'm careful and I don't overspend and at the moment it's very borderline. David, that's, very a, borderline. that's a massive worry though for someone who has never been in debt before. You, you get yourself in trouble here. Well I know, it's horrible, it's a horrible feeling. Your stomach churns a bit sometimes and I think this is my life at the moment. I've gone past the point of no return. I'm a beast obsessed really with getting this project completed. And I just had to put up with the uh, nagging worry. I mean, Jenny said to me the other night, she said, you shouted tower in your sleep. <laughs> you didn't. Well, she said, I did. <laughs> I didn't believe it. I said, I didn't. She said, you shouted tower. <laughs> so I can, I can only assume that it's obviously having a, a problem. You've been tormented, David. I am. David is struggling with the tower, his family's scepticism, and his own dwindling finances. He's pushing himself to the edge and risking life and limb. You've got to ask yourself, is this building really worth it? And can he get it finished? Engineer David Forster dreams of a life of tranquility in a remote tower in the Norfolk woods. He fell in love with the Victorian charms of this old water tower and has been trying to turn it into a family home. But for the last eight months, things haven't been easy. The last time I saw David, he was a very worried man. The scale of the project was enormous. He was way behind with the work and taking some big risks. Add to that the escalating costs. I wonder if the dream is still alive. Hi, David. <laughs> How are you? How are you? All right, George. You're well. Excellent. At the top, the weather vane is finished. At the bottom, the well is looking great. But between the two, there's still some work to do. What is really good, David, is you've got your first flight of stairs in. Well, nearly. nearly. You've got one, two, three, four, five, 
six, six steps in. Yes. It looks beautiful. You can just imagine as you spiral up and up and up through all of these floors, it's going to be so spectacular. It actually reminds me of, of a sort of church tower when you've got a very tight stone staircase in a church tower, get to the top and get the views of the yeah. city. Yeah. When it's done, if it goes to plan, we should have little tiny apertures as you go up, rather like Alice in Wonderland. So as she falls down the hole, yeah. there's little tiny leaded cupboards that you can open. There's a little teacup behind one and perhaps a little tiny book behind another. That's what I'm trying to engineer at the moment. So, so you're, you you're trying to engineer a fairy tale, are you? Yeah, because I think it's rather sort of romantic. It is romantic, like it's beautiful. Now you have got all the sockets in place. We've got the, the sockets, the electrics good. are all done. Really good. All right, the lights aren't in yet, but all the, all the cabling has been done for that. Good. On this level, as it says here, window. Window, yes. You were going to have a window. Well, we are still, it? We'll get, the window hasn't been put in yet because we're behind time. We've got to get the staircase done. And we've got a knop out through, two foot of solid brick there. Yeah. What's special about this is that you're going to get a view out to the entrance area yeah. right, when you drive yeah. through the trees. I think it's rather nice. I've, I'm going to have a sink here, a little a washing up place here, so that, you know, when I've got my skivvy and she's doing her washing ups. This is going to be the kitchen. This is the kitchen. Ah, of course. This is the kitchen. Ah, cooker. It's a long way from being finished, but this is a labour of love. And for David, the detail is everything. And, of course, we've got our glass hatchway here, so you can see people entering the building down below and look into the well at the same time. This is quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. So you're going to have a sheet of glass over the top of here, yeah. and you're going to look down to the entrance hall. Yeah. You're going to see the other circular sheet of glass over the well. Correct. So you're looking all the way down yeah. through this space, the next space, space. and through the, the well to the very bottom. You've got it. As long as there's nobody with short skirts, George. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Further up, the bedrooms are as yet unfinished. But nothing can stop David's determination. It's a long way up, David. I'll give you that. It is a long way up, George, yeah. But this has always been a spectacular and dramatic space, hasn't it? Yeah. Beautifully detailed. And, and the views are just incredible. But they've always been here, David. They when have. is this going to become a livable space for you? Well, hopefully, hopefully, um, within the year. We have done the roof, yes. and we have put those little roof lights in. That's true. Okay, so we have actually done what we've said we were going to do. But when you look at everything else that needs to be done in here, there is a lot. There is an enormous amount. Of noise. You've got to <laughs> sort the timbers out. You've got to yeah. restore the windows. You've got to sort out all the oak frame into the windows. Mm. You've got to cut that hole <clears> in the <throat> steel work, which is going I to be a yeah. massive, yeah. massive project. It's daunting, but you have to keep going on. You know, I'm an engineer by trade, and I'm, I know I can do it. What do you say to people who doubt that you'll do this? I'll do it. It may take time. It may not be in the, in the time that I anticipated, but I will get it done. David is still a believer, and his dream is very much alive. And after all his hard work, the whole family are beginning to share his vision. It would be kind of cool to live in it. It's so different. I mean, how many people live in a water tower? I think I could live in it. I think I could live in this now. He will do it. I know he would be happier if he was living here. And I think he does deserve the chance to get something absolutely right and to feel happy with it. It's ridiculous to abandon it halfway through, so however much it takes, we'll just have to. It. I mean, if somebody said to me, right, it's got to be finished at the end of the month, there wouldn't be enough money. But if it's going to progress at the current rate, then I think we can safely say there will be enough to finance it in the end. <laughs> David, how important is it for you that Jenny does get involved in this? I'm doing it mainly for her and the boys. I mean, Stephen's been great. He's helped me out on a few things. And Freddie's, dear little Freddie's been whacking holes through, you know, two feet of solid brickwork, determined to do that to the late hours in the evening. So they're, they're there, and Jenny's in the background. Without her, it won't, won't materialise, so I, I want them to have it. It's, it's, it's theirs, and I want to get it right, and I want to give something to my beloved wife, who's been putting up with my quirky, quirky ideas and tantrums over the last 25 years, and I want her to concentrate a little bit and do the things that she wants to do. David's dream of a new life in a magical tower, surrounded by natural beauty and away from the stresses and strains of modern life, is one of the most poetic dreams I've ever come across. But when your ambition is so great, the challenge is always great too. I'm sure David will keep striving on, 
and I hope that one day he does finish this remarkable building and gets the fairy tale ending he deserves. Next week, Paul and Tracy leave Stress and Suburbia to create a luxury home in Cambridgeshire. But their dream life comes at a hefty price. Every single credit card has been used and put right up to the limit.